Hey guys, this is Fixer Med. Welcome back to my high yield anatomy review series for the USMLE Step 1, NBME CBSE, and NBME CAS examinations. In this series, I will be covering a broad overview of the discipline of anatomy across various organ blocks for these examinations. This will be part 60 of my multi-part video series of doing so. Without any further delay, let's go ahead and get started on today's content. Let's start off by taking a look at anatomical relations of the thyroid gland. Anterolateral, infrahyoid muscles, posterolateral, common carotid artery, medial, larynx, trachea, pharynx, esophagus, cricothyroid muscle, recurrent laryngeal nerve, posterior parathyroid glands. Let's next take a look at the median cervical cyst. Typically presents as a painless midline mass on the anterior aspect of the neck at the level of the hyoid bone, moving during swallowing. It is a remnant of the thyroglossal canal. The thyroid gland originally develops from epithelium of the tongue, must be differentiated from a thyroid mass. Treatment Surgical Excision Let's next take a look at the variation of parathyroid glands position. The superior parathyroid glands are more consistent in position compared to the inferior ones. The inferior parathyroid glands are usually located near the inferior poles of the thyroid gland but may vary in position. In 1% to 5% of people, an inferior parathyroid gland can be found deep in the superior mediastinum within the thymus due to their common embryonic origin. All right, guys, now that we have covered all of the content, let's go ahead and take a look at some questions to review the knowledge you have gained so far. During a thyroidectomy, a surgeon must be cautious of several anatomical structures surrounding the thyroid gland. Which of the following structures is found medial to the thyroid gland? All right, I think I gave you guys enough time here. I'm gonna move on to see what the correct answer is and what the reasoning behind it is. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. Otherwise, moving on now. The correct answer is C, recurrent laryngeal nerve. The recurrent laryngeal nerve is located medial to the thyroid gland. This nerve is crucial for voice production as it innervates the muscles of the larynx. During thyroid surgery, care must be taken to avoid damaging this nerve to prevent hoarseness or loss of voice. All right, let's go ahead and see why the other answer choices are incorrect. The incorrect choices can be explained as follows. A. The common carotid artery is posterolateral to the thyroid gland, not medial. B. The infrahyoid muscles are located anterolateral to the thyroid gland. D. The parathyroid glands are found posterior to the thyroid gland. E. The external jugular vein is located superficial to the sternocleidomastoid muscle and is not in close proximity to the thyroid gland in a medial position. All right, now that we have covered this question, let's move on to look at the next question. A 30-year-old woman presents with a painless midline mass in her neck that moves upon swallowing. Imaging reveals a cystic structure located at the level of the hyoid bone. What is the most likely diagnosis for this midline neck mass? All right, I think I gave you guys enough time here. I'm gonna move on to see what the correct answer is and what the reasoning behind it is. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. Otherwise, moving on now. The correct answer is A, thyroglossal duct cyst. The presentation of a painless midline neck mass that moves with swallowing, particularly at the level of the hyoid bone, is characteristic of a thyroglossal duct cyst. These cysts result from a failure of the thyroglossal duct to obliterate during thyroid gland migration from the tongue base to its final position in the neck. Surgical excision is the treatment of choice for symptomatic thyroglossal duct cysts. All right, let's go ahead and see why the other answer choices are incorrect. 
the incorrect choices can be explained as follows. B. Thyroid adenoma typically presents as a solitary nodule within the thyroid gland and is not associated with midline movement upon swallowing. C. Lymphangioma is a benign tumor of lymphatic vessels and presents as a soft, fluctuant mass in the neck, but it is not typically located at the level of the hyoid bone. D. Parathyroid adenoma presents with symptoms related to hyperparathyroidism and is not typically associated with midline neck masses. E. Branchial cleft cysts are usually lateral neck masses, not midline, and are associated with the second branchial cleft, not the thyroglossal duct. All right, now that we have covered this question, let's move on to look at the next question. During a surgical procedure involving the thyroid gland, the surgeon encounters a parathyroid gland located deep within the superior mediastinum, within the thymus. Which of the following embryonic origins explains this variation in parathyroid gland position? All right, I think I gave you guys enough time here. I'm gonna move on to see what the correct answer is and what the reasoning behind it is. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. Otherwise, moving on now. The correct answer is A, second pharyngeal pouch. The parathyroid glands have their origin from the endodermal lining of the third and fourth pharyngeal pouches during embryonic development. The superior parathyroid glands arise from the fourth pharyngeal pouch, while the inferior parathyroid glands originate from the third pharyngeal pouch. The presence of an inferior parathyroid gland within the superior mediastinum suggests a migration anomaly from the third pharyngeal pouch, which develops within the thymus. All right, let's go ahead and see why the other answer choices are incorrect. The incorrect choices can be explained as follows. B. The third pharyngeal pouch gives rise to the thymus and inferior parathyroid glands. C. The fourth pharyngeal pouch contributes to the formation of the thyroid gland. D. The ultimobranchial body gives rise to the parafollicular C cells of the thyroid gland, not the parathyroid glands. E. Rathke's pouch is an embryonic structure that gives rise to the anterior pituitary gland, not the parathyroid glands. Um, alright guys, that is all I have for the video today. As always, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this if they are beneficial to you. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to type them up in the comment section below. Anyways, guys, this is Fixer Med signing off. Be sure to have a great day, everyone. Good luck studying as always, and goodbye.